right, everyone, welcome to another episode of UX Pathways, and I have the honor of being joined by Carol Smith. Carol, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for including me. This is fun. Great. Yeah, thank you for joining. And it's been, you know, I've admired your career, and you've had so many twists and turns, and it's been, it's always interesting to kind of hear how you landed. And I'm curious, what what currently are you doing as your 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 position? Yeah, yeah. So right now I am a senior research scientist in human machine interaction. Um, so really looking at the relationships between people and the systems that they're working with. And I am in the AI division of the Software Engineering Institute, and that's within Carnegie Mellon University. So we're a unique. Uh, in that we do uh, academic work, but also uh, we advise and, and work with our government uh, partners as well. Oh. That's amazing. So it sounds like uh, you, <laughs> you're on the cutting edge of technology, which you've always done, and at least from my observation. So I guess my question to you is, how did you stumble into all of this? Yeah, yeah. So, so this particular position, I, I just applied. A lot of the um, the work that I've uh, been uh, lucky enough to do um, over the majority of my career, I've um, I've been blindly applying, uh, if you will, uh, seeing a position that looked interesting and uh, and just putting it out there, and been very lucky um, in that regard. Um, I, I did have the uh, the honor of one one uh, job uh, when I went to IBM. That was uh, someone had referred me. Uh, they they were interested in, in me uh, working there, so that was lovely. But generally, it's you know it's been something looks interesting, and and I get into it. And I've been working in artificial intelligence uh, since 2015, starting at IBM, and then uh, working on autonomous vehicles, and now uh, here at the Software Engineering Institute. And how about this whole? industry of user experience where did you start out how did you how did you get into user experience specifically yeah i i really didn't know what it was um, when i started my master's program it was uh, i was looking for a uh, advanced degree a master's program probably looking in business so i was looking at a lot of mba programs and uh, my employment situation at the time wasn't going to enable me to not work full time and and to not I wasn't going to be able to attend classes during the day. I needed to to, uh, to deal with that. And uh, I happened upon the human computer interaction program at DePaul University in Chicago and uh, was amazed that you could get paid to do this <laughs> and, and that this was a career. It, it just wasn't even something I considered. And I really found uh, computers to be frustrating to use. And I really liked helping people. I was working in customer service at the time. And it seemed like a great way to bring together my past art background as well. My undergrad was in photography and videography. So it was bringing all those pieces together and uh, enabling me to move out of the customer service job, which is what I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it's interesting, your, your background. And it seems like a lot of individuals that have, I guess, fallen into this industry have come from, from different unique backgrounds. It sounds like you've been able to apply that and then find this curiosity that you had and then merge those together and make that a career. That's awesome. And I guess along that path, have you discovered you know, any advice to someone that's thinking about maybe I should, maybe I should join this industry and maybe I should do this. Is there anything that you've learned or any, you know, wisdom? Yeah, I definitely think that you do need to take the initiative. It's it's a tough um, job market if you don't have experience yet. Um, so definitely networking. And even though that hasn't been my experience, they they still say that knowing people and, and being aware of, of you as a candidate is a part of uh, finding work. So I always recommend that people, uh, you know, just make connections, take on, um, if, if you can, you know, do uh, work that can add to your portfolio, even if it's just, you know, in your free time and, you know, just slowly build that up so that you have work to show. Um, and, and certainly there are plenty of amazing programs out there, but, you know, in my experience, it, it was tough to find something that would work with my, with my schedule. So that can be frustrating. And there are some boot camps, but you got to be careful about the ones that you, that you look into and, and really vet and make sure that it's going to be a worthwhile investment that you're going to get um, what you want out of it. Um, it's a great career, and there's so many different things you can do, and there's so many new opportunities. It's amazing. Yeah, definitely true. And it sounds like you found a successful path 
going to graduate school and going down that path. So that that'll that gave you some some other, I guess, keys to your future. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For me, that was definitely a, the right choice. It worked out very well. Um, it's been 20 years and then it's definitely been a been a good choice. Um, but I, it's also not for everyone. Uh, not everyone can can make that time and, and it's expensive. Um, and thankfully, more uh, employers are realizing that uh, people from non-traditional backgrounds can be a huge benefit to an organization and that their diversity of thought, the way that they are going to approach a problem is going to be beneficial to the organization and that they will be able to contribute in a different way, but always a, you know, a good way um, with the rest of the organization. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'll throw a bonus question in here since uh, you, you got my interest going and you talked about artificial intelligence is you get a lot of questions about the future, you know, where it's going. Cause obviously you're talking about getting into it and in words of advice, but is, what you're doing now, your current research, is that where you see the future of user experience going? Or are there other things that people should think about? Yeah, um, certainly I think artificial intelligence will definitely be part of many of the systems that we all um, interact with in the future. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done to, to make it um, you know, a significant impact in people's lives beyond using Google and, and those kinds of tools. Um, that being said, there, there's a lot of problems that, that need to be solved, particularly with um, regard to uh, safety and privacy and, and ethics and, and all of that work. Um, so there's a lot to be done, um, but there's plenty of regular software and, and other um, you know, so things that need that need UX work as well. So it's not certainly not the only path, um, but there is a lot of work to be done uh, in making artificial intelligence human centered and, and doing that work. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a the deep ocean exploration. Like there's still plenty yeah. to find, there's still plenty to do. So that's good news for everyone that's thinking about getting into industry or just wondering what this is all about. So that's great. Sure. <laughs> well, thank you, Carol, for sharing your story. And I think you've given a lot for people to think about, and especially your very unique path, which is what this is all about. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you for including me. You're welcome.